In today's video, we're going to talk about how to get the best color out of your EOS R5 in Lightroom. I don't know about you guys, but I was really excited last week when I realized that there was an update for the Adobe applications and that they were finally going to support the EOS R5. And so I downloaded the update and I got in there and I started looking around and I realized that the camera matching color profiles were missing. And this is really crucial to my workflow. If you guys have ever been to one of my workshops, one of the first things that I show people during the retouching section is to change Lightroom's color profile from Adobe standard to camera matching standard. Now, I don't know what Adobe based these profiles on. Maybe it was landscapes or something similar, but I don't think it was portraits of people, at least not with a Canon camera. In fact, when you use Adobe Standard, to me, it sort of looks like a 2008 Nikon image. It's just not very pleasing. Hopefully that wasn't offensive to you, but probably if you're watching this video, you're not a Nikon user. So anyway, I got online and I started looking at third-party options. And along the way, I realized that the EOS RP, which was released 18 months ago, and the 1DX Mark III do not have color matching or camera matching color profiles in Lightroom, which leads me to believe that it won't be anytime soon before the R5 and the R6 are fully supported in the application. And this is very disappointing, but luckily I found a third party vendor, Color Fidelity, and they make profiles for all sorts of cameras. And so I went ahead and downloaded version two for the R5 and it cost me a whole $15. And unfortunately those profiles weren't that great. But then I went ahead and I emailed the developer and I sent him some raw files from the same photo shoot from the R5 and the 5D Mark IV just to compare. And we exchanged a few messages and I'm sure other people were probably doing the same thing and helping him out. And then I got version three of his profiles and they were fantastic. He went ahead, it appears, and sent an email to everyone sending out an update of the profiles. And I think he also said that when he updates them again, he'll do it again. So I would just expect that these profiles are just going to get better and better over time. So before the Lightroom applications updated, all we had to work with really with this camera were the Canon applications. And their software, Digital Photo Professional, is really slow and only has global adjustments, but what it does have are the same picture styles that you get in your camera. So JPEGs from your camera in picture style standard should match JPEGs that you process from raw images in DPP with the picture style standard. So to set the table, I'm gonna start off by looking at a 5D Mark IV image in DPP in picture style standard and in Lightroom in camera matching standard. And that way we can see how those two compare. Then I'm gonna show you guys an image from the R5 in DPP in picture style standard and the same image in Lightroom with the color fidelity picture style or profile standard. And that way you can see how those compare. And then finally, I'm gonna compare two images from the same photo shoot, from the same look in Lightroom, one with the 5D Mark IV with the picture style camera matching standard, and the other one, the R5 with the color fidelity standard profile attached. And that way you can see how the two match with each other. So let's go ahead to the computer and get started. So the first thing I wanna show you guys are two pictures from the 5D Mark IV with the profile Adobe Standard. And if you look over here on the top right, right next to the word profile, just right below the histogram, you'll see the word Adobe Standard. And here's another image from the 5D Mark IV from the same photo shoot, and it's also in Adobe Standard, and these colors just look sort of gross to me. So if we go back to this very first one, and I click on the window over here on the right, right below the word basic in black and white, you'll get all of these uh, profiles that you can choose from. Here's Adobe Neutral and Standard, and then if we scroll down further, you'll see Camera Standard. And this is the color that we're used to out of these Canon cameras. So let me go ahead and slide over into Digital Photo Professional, 
and get a great comparison between these two images. So just to make sure that everything is fair and, and balanced in this comparison, I'm gonna take the DPP image or the DPP file and I'm gonna go up to adjustments and I'm gonna hit revert to shot settings. And that way we'll make sure that there's no adjustments over here to the file whatsoever. And then if we click on the color balance, I'm gonna go down to color temperature and I'm gonna enter 6,000 Kelvin. The reason is, is I don't have a lot of faith that those color temperature presets in DPP and Lightroom match exactly. So I'm just gonna use Kelvin to make sure everything is fair. So we're over here in DPP, we've got 6,000 degrees Kelvin. I'm gonna zoom in to 100% and just come up here to his face. Around the middle of the page on the side, you'll see picture style standard is, is selected for this image. And then we're gonna go over here to Lightroom and you can see that I have the profile camera standard and I'll just hit reset. So we'll go back to how I imported it and no adjustments at all are made to this image and then we'll go to standard and, and there we go. Okay, so you can see that these images do not look at all the same. So let's start making adjustments to the Lightroom image to try to make it look like the DPP image because I suspect that the camera standard profile in Lightroom, even though it's supposed to match what we get out of DPP, is not the same thing. So I'm going to start off by cooling this picture down to 5700 Kelvin. That is 300 degrees. And then I'm going to go ahead and look at the saturation of the image. It feels like the saturation is probably about 15 too high, I'm guessing. And then I can tell that there's too much magenta in this image. So I'm just going to zero out uh, the green magenta slider here and see if the two of them match. And I would say that's reasonably close. But it's not perfect, but it's good enough for a comparison. So just remember, we've cooled down the Lightroom image by 300 degrees and we've made the green magenta balance say zero, even though by default it was around 11 or 15. And then we've taken the saturation and decreased it about 15 points. Now we'll just need to remember that probably for later. So let's go ahead and look at the R5 image in DPP and in Lightroom. So now I'm gonna switch over to this R5 image. Okay, we got it up there. I'm going to pull up the same photo over here in Lightroom. And now I'm just going to hit reset in Lightroom to make sure everything is reset. And I'm going to go over to DPP. I'm going to go to adjustments and revert to shot settings. And now we know that everything is cleared out. I'm going to change the white balance in DPP back to 6000 Kelvin. And I'm going to make sure that our white balance over here in Lightroom is 6000 Kelvin. And you can see up here in the top left that this is in fact an R5 image. So over here in DPP on the right around the middle of the page, you can see that the picture style is set to standard and we're getting good color out of the camera. So I want to come over here into Lightroom and I want to click on the profile window and I want to browse down to the very bottom and let me find the color fidelity standard version three. And you guys can see right away that these two images match perfectly. And that's because color fidelity, or pretty much perfectly, and that's because color fidelity, I believe, has worked to make their standard in Lightroom look exactly like the standard that you're gonna get out of your camera or the standard that you're gonna get out of DPP. And I think that is a fair and reasonable and a good starting point to be at. Now, if you want to make it look like the Adobe standard, which actually I think did look pretty good. I'm sorry, I have to correct that. If you want it to look like Adobe's camera matching standard, which I think looked pretty good on the 5D Mark IV, we just need to make some adjustments to this image. So let's go back now and we're going to pull up an R5 image on the left and we'll have a 5D Mark IV image on the right, both in Lightroom, and we'll try to make them match. So let's just go ahead and maximize this window here. And we'll go ahead and grab our R5 image. 
And remember, we just want to make sure that the, the R5, I mean the 5D Mark IV picture is in camera standard. It is. And that we need the Kelvin to be 6,000 Kelvin. And we need the saturation to be zeroed out. I just want it to be fair across the board. Actually, I'll just do this. I'm going to hit reset. So everything on this image has been wiped away. And I'm just going to make sure that it's in camera standard, which it is. I'm just going to make sure that the color balance is 6,000 Kelvin, which is where I shot it at, and plus 11 green. So let's go ahead and pull up the R5 image. And then we'll look at it. We'll make sure that we're in color fidelity standard version 3 and that the color balance is 6,000 Kelvin plus 11. And let's just get in there close and look at these two pictures side by side. We've got the R5 image on the left, and I would say that that looks undersaturated, slightly magenta. No, I would say it looks undersaturated and a little cool. So let's look at that bigger. So earlier, we had to take about 300 Kelvin off of the 5D Mark IV image to get them to match. So let's do the opposite, which is let's add 300 Kelvin. So now we'll go to 6300 Kelvin. And we had to take 15 points of saturation off. So we're going to add 15 points of saturation in. And now let's compare the two images. OK, I think that the color fidelity needs a little more warmth. So we'll just bring that up to 6500 Kelvin. And let's compare the two. And let me just check this um, green magenta balance on these two pictures. OK, so they're both set right now to 11. Let me look at the comparison. I would say that there's more green in the 5D Mark IV image. So let's take some, uh, let's add green or take magenta out. I'm going to zero it out of the R5 image. Okay, and I would say that these images, for the most part, basically match. Now, it's not the best color that we would want, you know, as far as a skin tone, we'd still want to make some tweaks to it, but it does show that the color fidelity profile, version 3 standard, does match camera standard in DPP, and if you make some subtle adjustments to it, it will match the Adobe camera matching standard uh, that we're probably used to using. And so this gives me confidence that I'll be able to use these color profiles, which again, I paid $15 for. He's not paying me anything to promote this. I was just looking for a solution and found one. So I wanted to share it with you guys. And so let me go ahead and show you a full size retouch version of this photo with the final color, at least what I think will be the final color. Okay, so here it is. And if you notice, like I've done some skin retouching, I've brought my white balance to 6350 Kelvin and the magenta to 10. I've increased the exposure a little bit, played with the shadows and highlights, and I did some dodging and burning. But I didn't make any color adjustments um, down further in the HSL or on the uh, sliders at the very bottom. I just wanted to get really good and nice neutral and natural color out of this photo, and I think it worked out great. Anyway, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave those below. If you're, uh, you know, a big Sony fan and you want to tell me about how our color sucks, you know, go right ahead. That's fine. Um, I'm probably going to try out Capture One because I'm very curious because they do have uh, camera matching profiles. But I think these color fidelity profiles are at least going to get us a lot closer, a lot closer than those Adobe color matching profiles. Um, I should say, than the Adobe color profiles. So um, I think this is a very good solution. It's certainly worth $15 to get us uh, in the right ballpark. So thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe and have a great day.